It's homework time. Happy, happy homework time is here again. Lesson 32 homework. Let's start by taking a moment, just a moment, jot our name down at the top of our paper. I'll put my name, you put yours, and let's jot down today's date. I'll write today, you write the actual date, where and when you are in this world. Our instructions solve the following problems. Okay, draw tape diagrams to help you solve. By the way, that's not a suggestion. We're actually going to do it. If there's a remainder, shade in a small portion of the tape diagram to represent that portion of the whole. Okay, so that's a little weirdness, but we can deal with it. So we have Menica, and she bought a package of 435 party favors to give to the guests at her birthday party. She calculated that she could give nine party favors to each guest, how many guests is she expecting? Wow, okay, ooh, put us right into the fire here. No little easy warm up. So we do know something. We know, ooh, that my tape is crazy. We know how many party favors we have, right? So we have 435. Okay, and now we're giving nine to each. So if I were to start divvying this up, dividing it up, I know that each of these is nine. Okay, what I don't know, and you remember this from the last one, is how many groups. So it's going to be a dot, dot, dot ellipses here. Um, we don't know how many divisions there are, right? So, uh, but we do know that there are nine in each. So if we take the 435, and kind of picture this in your head, the 435 parte favors, and we start putting them in little bags of nine, well, that will tell us how many bags we have, and that will tell us how many guests she's expecting, which seems to be quite a lot. This is going to be some party. Hope her parents are ready for this. So how many nines in 43? Well, you know, 9 times 5 is 45, so it's too much. So 9 times 4, will that work? 9 times 4 is 36. See, again, a little tricky with the numbers here. You need to subtract, and if you want, do it this way. 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43. Ah, yes, it's 7. Okay. And then we have 5 ones. So 75. How many 9s and 75? I think three or nines. Yes, nine times eight is 72. And when we subtract, we are left with three, and that's, uh, that's a remainder. A remainder of three um, party favors, okay? So um, if each of these is nine, here's where that remainder shading comes in. I'm just going to have a little sliver here at the end. And I'm going to shade in. And I'm going to label it remainder of three. So how many full bags do we have? Remember, let's think about these things logically. We have 48 bags. That's a, and according to her math. Anyway, that's how many guests she is expecting. So Manica is expecting 48 guests. All right, well, have a great birthday. Happy birthday, Menica. And uh, while you're celebrating, we're going to go on to number two. And in number two, we've gone from party to pencil. So 4,000 pencils were donated to an elementary school. If eight classrooms shared the pencils equally, how many pencils did each class receive? Well, this is pretty clear cut, right? So we have 4,000 pencils. And it'd be cute if I drew this to look like a pencil, but I'm not gonna. Um, so this whole group here is 4,000 pencils. 
And then we know how many groups we're splitting it into. There are eight, right? So I could draw seven lines inside here, and I'll end up with eight. In fact, if I do this, look, split it in half. Split the halves in half. That's four, right? Can I split these each in half? I get two, four, six, eight. It works. Look, two, four, six, eight. And that's, that's good for fractions, too, when we get to fractions and decimals. All right, so uh, they're sharing. What I don't know is how many pencils, we'll call this P, for each class. So, but well, I can do the math. And so, by the way, here we know the groups, we don't know the size of each group. All right, so 4,000. This one's surprisingly easy, isn't it? I think that first one was a little more challenging. Not much, but a little. So how many eights in 40? Yes, you know that five, and I'm, notice I'm putting it right in the hundreds place above the zero in that 40 that I'm speaking of. There, there are five eights in 40 because five times eight indeed is 40. And here's another little lesson in zeros. Let's treat it like any other number. Okay, so I have zero hundreds. Well, now I can divide the zero tens. How many eights in zero? There are zero because zero times eight is zero. I know I keep saying zero. Subtract and you get zero. There's another zero. <laughs> and we have zero ones to divide. How many eights in zero? There are zero because zero times eight is zero. Okay, so that's the full thing there. Um, so each class receives 500 pencils. That answers the question, how many pencils did each class receive? Each class received 500 pencils, which my students go, go through in an afternoon. I think they eat them or something. All right, let's go on to number three. And in number three, we go from parties to pencils to potatoes. They're on a roll here, a potato roll to be exact. So we have 2,008 kilograms of potatoes. They're packed into sacks weighing eight kilograms each. How many sacks were packed? Okay, so again, if we draw this out, we know our total number of or weight, rather, of potatoes, prates, taters, is 2,008. And I'll write the kg, so I remember it's not the number of potatoes, but kilograms. And now I know that it's being packed into sacks. I'll put these in a sack, these in a sack, these in a sack. And I know each sack is 8 kilograms but I don't know how many sacks, so I'm going to add my ellipses there to say, well, I don't know, it continues on dividing up. Um, and then I'll have to remember what to do if I have a remainder, which we didn't on the last one, right? So uh, if I take my kilograms of potatoes here, 2,008, and divide it up, you can see why we're doing division, into sacks of 8 kilograms. That will tell me how many sacks there are. So how many 8's in 20? There are 2 because 2 times 8 is 16. When we subtract out those praters, we are left with 4 hundreds and we have 0 tens to divide. Treat it like a number. How many 8's in 40? There are, yes, we just did this. There are 5 because 5 times 8 is 4. 40. Subtracting, we have zero, but we still have eight kilograms of potatoes to divide up. Oh, eight. How many eights in eight? There is one, of course, because one times eight is eight. Subtracting, no remainder. Lovely. So, how many sacks? 251 sacks. So, 251 sacks were packed. And again, they're using the passive voice. We have no idea who is packing these potatoes. I think it's hobbits. All right, 251 sacks were packed. And speaking of packing sacks, let's see what number four has in store. 
Well, I was hoping they'd keep the pea thing going. I thought they could have done pastries here, but instead we got muffins. Oh, well. So a baker made seven batches of muffins. There was a total of 252 muffins. If there was the same number of muffins in each batch, how many muffins were in a batch? So kind of picture this. So you kind of play it on your head. The baker, he's like, okay, you're going to put in some muffins. Boom, take them out. Boom. Boom, make some more muffins. Boom, another batch. Boom, another. Boom, I lost count, but let's say it's seven. And then he's done. I've done this seven times, and now I have 252 muffins. And somebody says, well, geez, how many did you put in the oven at once? That's a big oven. And he says, gosh, I don't know, but let's find out. So let's find out. So we can draw a very simple tape here. We know the total number of muffins. So you draw a nice long tape for all our MoFans. There are 252 MoFans. And they're in seven batches, so to divide this into seven partitions, we need to draw six lines that are kind of equally spaced. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Not bad, it's all right. Um, so now, just to check, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we know the number of groups, right? You can see it there, right? And what we're trying to find is how big is one batch. So we'll call this M for muffins. So uh, we know that there are seven batches. So if we take the 252 muffins, we can see how this makes sense, how we know that we need to divide. Not just because we're doing division, but because it makes sense. And we divide those 252 muffins across the seven batches. That'll tell us how many were in each batch. So let's do that. How many sevens in 25? You know that one, yep. Three times seven is 21. Subtracting, we're left with four. And then we have two ones. So how many sevens in 42? Yeah, you know that one too. Great. There are six because six times seven is 42. And we really shouldn't have had a remainder here because the problem stated there was the same number of muffins in each batch. So there shouldn't be any uh, remainder. Oh my goodness. Is that a zero? It's a muffin. Okay. So how many muffins are in each batch? You got it right there. 36. And that's our question. Um, there were, we say the baker baked. 36. And that doesn't seem like so much anymore, does it? Muffins in each batch. Yeah, because if you have a, uh, a tray that holds 12, that's just three trays at a time. Put in three trays, do that seven times, you got yourself 252 muffins. You can bring them to Menica's party over there. All right, so let's go on to, are we, is, is number five the last one? Already? My goodness, time flies when you're having math fun. Let's do it. And ultimately here in number five, we come to a subject near and dear to my heart, running. So Samantha ran 3,003 meters in seven days. If she ran the same distance each day, how far did Samantha run in, oh, Three days. Ah, we saw one like this before, right? Uh, on the, the previous homework, in lesson 31. Uh, very similar. Okay, so let's draw this out. So we know the total. That's going to be our whole tape. So we know the total she ran is 3,003 meters. And that was split across seven days. Okay, so I can draw six lines inside this rectangle to get seven relatively equal partitions. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And eh, not bad. All right, so I have seven days, 3,003 meters. So the question is, how far did you run in three days? But obviously, in order to find that, we first need to know what one day is, okay? So we'll call that R for her one day run, but what we're really looking to find, and your tape diagram should 
uh, show this, we're really trying to find how far she ran in three days, which I'll call T for three. So we obviously have a two-step problem here. That's why we draw it all out so you can see, okay, I have to solve for one day, and if I triple that, multiply it by three, uh, the total for three days. So let's do that. And we can see we're dividing to start with because we have 3,000, three meters, which are divided across seven days. So let's divide. How many sevens in 30? Mm, you know that, right? It's four because four times seven is, yep, 28. When you subtract, you are left with two hundreds. Treat zero like an, any other number. We have zero tens to divide here. So, so how many sevens in 20? Oh, well, seven times three is 21. That's too much. So, so it's going to have to be two because two times seven is 14. Subtracting, we're left with six, and that leaves us with three ones that also need to be divided up. How many sevens in 63? Oh, hey, that's a fact, Jack, isn't it? Yep, nine times seven is 63, so we subtract, we're left with zero. So only that first one had a remainder for us to shade in and get all shady about. So now we're done, right? No, that's, that gives us R all right over here. She runs each day 429 meters. And by the way, just to take a quick moment, give me this, give me a moment. If you think about it, that's actually really not too far. It might sound like, oh, 429 meters. Um, but think about it, how many kilometers is that? Well, one kilometer is 1,000 meters. So that's not even 1,000 a, a meters. That's not one kilometer. In fact, it's less than half a kilometer. And the shortest race generally you can run would be a 5K, which, I don't know, you could do in like 18 to 25 minutes, right? It's not, it's not a long run. A 5K is, is 3.1 miles. So this isn't even uh, one kilometer. This is half a kilometer when a smallest race you can run is a five kilometer, a 5K. I'm not putting down Samantha. I just want to give you a sense of how long is 429 meters. It would take you, um, I don't know, 5K takes you 20 minutes to make the math easy. That's four minutes per K. So this would take you about two minutes to run. That's why, again, I'm not picking on Samantha. Go, Samantha. You go, girl. Run. But, uh, but just so you have a mental sense of how far this is. So across three days, if we take the 429 meters. Oh, great. Now Samantha's upset with me. Uh, and you multiply it by three, we'll know how far she ran in three days. All right, so let's do it. Three times nine is 27. Three times two is six plus two is eight. And three times four is 12. So 1,287 meters in three days. Does that make sense? Yeah, this is about 400 times 3 would be about 1,200. Um, three of the seven days should be a little less than half. Half of 3,000 we know is 1,500. This is a little bit less than 1,500. Good. It all makes sense. So Samantha, bless her heart, ran 1,287 meters in three days. And you keep going there, Sammy. And as far as keeping on going, we are done keeping on going. This homework time is over. I'll see you next time. It is once again homework time. Yeah.